Thank you. Good afternoon. So uh, thank you all for coming here. And what I wanted to do with you today is talk to you about where we've been with DevNet, how we've advanced, and how we've evolved. And you know, DevNet is more than just technology. DevNet is about technology and APIs. It's about our people. It's about innovation. And it's about business disruption. And what many people have said is, I've learned about some of the software. I've learned about this technology. How do I go back to my organization and get everyone else to jump in and adopt these? And that's why I just wanted to say that it's also about cultural change. It's about changing how we use these new technologies, how we build our solutions, and make broader change across. To start out, I want to first of all thank you. I want to thank all of you because together, what we've done is that we have changed the networking industry. If you go back five years ago, there was a time when networkers, people did not expect that networkers would be able to do software. It seemed like it was a different world. It seemed like the industry was going to be disrupted and the people were going to be displaced. But what we've seen is that our community has come together, our community is understanding the value of software, learning about it, and all of you have put in all of the hard work to make this happen. And so I want to thank you because together we've changed the industry, together we built DevNet, and you're the heroes in this transformation. Thank you. So what I want to do is show you some of the progress that we've made together as a community since Cisco Live US in June. So over the last six months, back in June, we actually announced that we hit half a million registered DevNet members. In the six months that's followed, we've grown to 550,000 members. So we got 50,000 new members in the last six months. Our DevNet ecosystem has grown. We have 108 new partners that have come on, and we have over 1,800 ecosystem solutions in DevNet. And in our Solutions Plus program, we've brought eight ISVs to Cisco's global price list so that their software can be distributed by our ecosystem to our customers around the world. In addition, we were taking a look at the business impact of Cisco and trying to understand that. We went back and we looked at all of Cisco's partners, and then we simply found which ones had DevNet members and which ones did not. And what we found is that the partners that had DevNet members grew 10 points more than those who do not. They didn't grow 10% more, they grew 10 points more, which is very significant. They've also had a greater product mix. Instead of being involved in three product areas, they're involved in eight product areas. So they have broader portfolios that they're offering to their customers. So what we're finding is that partners who leverage DevNet are growing faster than those who don't. And we didn't say that we're necessarily the cause of that, but certainly it shows the investment that you're making and what you're learning to differentiate your business. Now let's also talk about what we've done in Europe. So our community in Europe makes up over one-third of our DevNet community. We have 37.5% of DevNet's members are in EMIR. These members have taken over 34,000 learning labs. You're learning, you're transforming, picking up these new skills. We've also had DevNet Express events across Europe. We've had 34 DevNet Express events over 21 different countries. And in addition, we've partnered with our countries to create and work on the DevNet ecosystem in our countries. And so specifically with Italy, we've opened up a new academy in Italy, and we've been working to build out the developer ecosystem. We've held a DevNet Connect event in Portugal to work with the local partners and app developers there as well, and we're continuing to grow throughout Europe. So now let's step back and talk about what's happening in the industry and what this means for all of you. As we know, all of your CEOs have very tough business problems in their mind. Every industry is being disrupted. All of the traditional businesses are being disrupted by new digital disruptive players. And what happens is, in order to compete, what I found is that IT holds the keys to success. With your IT systems, you can keep your IT systems the way they were. You know, what's the tr traditional business, what's gotten you successful to where you are is a, lot of, is a lot of legacy, it's a lot of 
knowledge, it's a big knowledge base, and it's been a great system that served you well over time. But now to compete with the new players, you have cloud players, we have application developers, microservices, it's a whole new world, and IT holds the success. If IT modernizes your infrastructure and adopts these new best practices, then you can compete in this new world of digital disruption, and it's our job to jump in and do that. Now let me give an example within the retail industry, but this applies across all industries. So let's take a look at what's happening in retail, and please think about your own industry as I describe this. So what we're finding is just thinking about the customers first. Customers are shopping online and in physical stores. And if you take a look of yourself as a shopper, Sometimes you do your online shopping, sometimes you're in the store, but basically you're searching for what you want. You're visiting a store or a site, navigating through your choices, checking out to buy something, and then you fulfill, and sometimes you need customer support. But you have different channels. You can do this online, and you can do this in physical stores. And what happens is often the back-end IT systems are very different. What you've done to build out a physical store is very different from how you resource online. A retailer might have acquired a company that does the online portion, so once again, different IT systems. And yet customers expect one experience. So what we find is that traditional retailers face the biggest competition from these online retailers, but they have an interesting advantage because most physical purchases happen in physical stores. Believe it or not, 88.1% of purchases in 2018 happened in physical stores. So it turns out the traditional retailer has a tremendous advantage there because they have the stores. But really the key is how do we mix that, the traditional with the digital, to make the right thing happen? So the other thing to notice is in the, uh, in the retail industry, there's room for innovation and there's room for innovation to win customers. And this comes from blending the digital and the physical experience. So what do I mean there's room for innovation? It's just like, as a shopper, you are still looking for new things. And I went out and I asked all my friends, and I asked, uh, actually on social media, what are your magic moments in shopping? And if we take a look at around, we get different answers from around the globe. So in the Americas, it's something like, I bought my things online, then I had my kids in the car, I was driving, I pulled up into the store, and then my goods were delivered to my car. I never had to take my kids out of the car. Amazing blend of online and physical. When I talked to some of my team in Asia, and I told them about it, blink, blink, they couldn't relate to it at all. Because they don't have big cars and drive up to big stores. They're on two-hour train commutes, and they're mobile, they're out. But what happens there is that mobile is a way of life. They're using their mobile phones for everything, people are understanding them, that's kind of the key. So if we go over to Europe, then we have an interesting thing where you have synchronized inventory and pricing. You can go out and buy something, and when you buy something, you get the price at the last minute. It looks for the systems, look for the best price online and in person, and give you the best price. So these are all great examples, but they're examples where digital and physical come together. And what happens is, how can you take your system and make it able to handle this area well, the one thing that I can say is, how do you take your systems and blend them so you can deliver these great experiences? It's hard. Disruption is hard. It's actually hard to kind of make that update to say, I'm gonna modernize and be able to blend all this, but our advice is be bold and start now. Start that transformation now. And in retail, what we tell people is, first, make the store a destination. You have the advantage because people go there. Make it a place not just where you see products on the shelf, but will you let people experience things? Gain intelligence from when they're there. Find out where they're spending their time, the way you can find out where people spend time online. So learn more, maximize intelligence with every interaction, and you can do this by making a programmable store. And what do I mean by that, and how does this apply across industries? So if we look across industries, what we're saying is no matter what you're in, banking, manufacturing, industry, retail, make your infrastructure programmable. As you make your infrastructure programmable, offer infrastructure services in which you can offer these programmable services. Also, offer application services that allow you to continuously deploy applications across this programmable infrastructure, and that lets you cre create new experiences for your customers, your users, or your IT and OT operators. The full stack looks like this, where we have multiple products that can actually fill different areas of the stack. 
And I don't have to go over all of it now, but these are available. And now what we're going to do is actually show you some different examples of how this comes to life. So that gave a framework. But now what I'd like to do is take the DevNet approach of see it, learn it, code it, where we're going to show you what can be done. We're going to teach you about what's being going on with the technology behind the scenes, and then show you how you can code it and how we have resources available for you to use it. So first of all, I'm going to, uh, we're going to talk about uh, creating new experiences in retail and doing this with Meraki Beat. And I'd like to invite up Ashutosh Malagankar. Hi, Susie. Hi there. Thank you for coming up. And he is our principal engineer in uh, DevNet, and he also runs our co-creations, where we create innovative solutions for our customers. Yes, thank you. So as you saw, right, Susie talked about blending like the infrastructure with the online world in the retail space. What I would like to do today is give you a flavor of the stack that she showed for the retail stores. And one of the things that you'll see is we took this uh, stack and built out a solution for a retailer. And some of the, the technologies that we used in the infrastructure were Meraki cameras, the Wi-Fi. The second thing is in terms of the services, it could be the location services. Also, like if you look at here, like we have a partner called Mishipay, and we have incorporated some of their technologies in building out their solution. What Mishipay does is it takes in RFID tags, and they're able to actually like scan different items in the store. So what you'll see now is a flavor of an example of what we did. So just imagine, right? I mean, this is a store uh, where the, one of the trends that is happening now in the industry is more and more retailers are offering a mobile app. And with that mobile app, you'll be able to download a particular application. You see a, 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 a device or an item, you scan it, and you go and do go check out. So what we did is at, at a store that we built, this is like as an imagination, just imagine that you are at a store and with the real demo that we did, we said that like with your mobile app, you scan item number one, then you go in, you scan item number two, and then once you're done, you basically say, hey, check out. And this is a great experience. You're not standing in the queue and you're walking out of the door. But from the retailer point of view, it's actually bringing in some new problems to them, which are good problems to solve. So one of the things is they need to actually understand if there are items that are walking out of the store without being paid for. Second is that they also want to know like what item it was and who really took that item. So what we did in this demo is like these RFID tags that were on each of the items as they left the store, there were RFID readers on the, on the doors, and they tagged, basically they activated. As soon as they got activated, they sent a message to Meraki cameras, where we actually went and looked at the Meraki cameras, pulled out the data, and showed that information on the digital signs from Cisco Vision. So that was a workflow that we built for this demo and the retail use case. Now, in terms of like, you know, I'm moving on to like Susie, what she talked about, the see it, uh, co code it, and learn it. So what, what you saw was the see it. In the learn part, basically what we did is we recently open sourced a, a, a project called Meraki Beat. And this is an awesome project for everybody out there. The reason it is is like it talks to Meraki on one side, be it the health APIs, it could be the location APIs, or even the camera APIs. What you could do is you can bring in all that data into the Elasticsearch uh, stack, which is the ELK stack as we talk. Once it is in Elasticsearch, you could write various different applications on top of that. And in this case, what we did is we took the RFID readers, the tags, Mishipay, uh, and sending that information into Elasticsearch. And from the Elasticsearch, we got that message saying that the stack left the store and we were able to like call the Meraki APIs and get that information from the Meraki and send a trigger on the digital signs. So this was the, the demo that we actually built out, and this is the case. And so in this case, the Meraki APIs are shown on the left side, but they're actually just calls to the actual Meraki access points. That's and correct. getting all this information from there and putting it into the pipeline. That's correct. Excellent. 
So, like, you know, the next question that's going to like, arise in your mind is like, okay, how can I build it for myself? Now, one of the thing is that, as I said, Meraki Beat uh, is an uh, application that is on our code exchange. So definitely go and download it at the link that we have shown here. Also, the integration that we did with MishiPay is also in there. So the MishiPay, the Meraki camera, as well as the Cisco Vision integration is, download, is, is uh, put out there for the community to start using. And finally, before I leave, uh, one of the things that we also mentioned is the MishiPay is available on our DevNet ecosystem. So definitely take a look at that, and you'll be able to like see how you can integrate their solutions uh, in your solutions as well. Thank so, you. So uh, you're saying that MishiPay is a product. It's a it, product made by some DevNet ISVs or developers. It is. And our retailers or partners who sell retail solutions can buy it today and include it in their solutions. Absolutely. Excellent. Great. All right. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Ashutosh. <laughs> so here we saw an example of a, of a retail experience, the scan and go experience that we wanted to create with the stack. And that was built for real. It's a real system and you can get all of the code on code exchange. And then you can also even get the solutions on DevNet ecosystem exchange. So now let's move to another part of the stack as we're looking at the full stack. A big problem that comes up is automation. So everybody has a lot of equipment. People are trying to do new things and trying to manage it. And automation is a key benefit of programmability. So let's talk about the infrastructure services that can come together through the stack and the automation that we can build from it. So once again, if we take a look at the full stack, what we have is the programmable infrastructure. And on top of the programmable infrastructure, we have some infrastructure services. So you want to think about exposing your infrastructure as infrastructure services. And now if you kind of go back to retail, then we're thinking about the stores, let's think about the IT systems underneath them. In those IT systems, you might have your data center that has a lot of your business critical data operating as a private cloud. Sometimes you're interfacing with the public cloud. And then you have the physical stores themselves. And each store has its own IT system. And of course, these are all connected. And again, this is a geographically distributed IT system. And so now what we're going to do is take a look at how the stack can be used in two use cases. So one use case is how can we roll out new services across stores? And we're going to show an example using Cisco Meraki. And in the second use case, we're going to show how do you open up a new store or open up a new branch and spin this up and have the full connectivity that you have in the same security as all of the other things. And we're going to use Cisco SD-WAN for this. Uh, to talk about this in our see it, learn it, code it style, I'm bringing up Mandy Whaley, who's my Senior Director of Developer Experience for DevNet. Thank you, Susie. Thanks, Mandy. Thanks so much. All right. Okay, so like we said, we're going to go through two examples that take us through see it, learn it, and code it. In the first one, we're going to work with Meraki. And we're going to look at where we want to bring up many different sites that are geographically distributed. And we're going to bring up network services. We're going to claim network devices, do some configuration. But we're going to do it through a chat bot, so a completely different style of interface for doing some of those operations. All right, so the pieces of the stack that we've been talking about that we use in this particular example is the Meraki wireless infrastructure. We're going to use the dashboard APIs, which let us do device configuration and set some of the things we, about how we want those devices to operate. And then we're going to use WebEx Teams to build the chatbot. So we start off, we um, ask our chatbot to start creating our organization in Meraki. And we give it the email of the owner who's going to own this administration. And it starts setting it up. And we can see that in the Meraki dashboard. Here's our organization but no sites yet, no networks. So let's deploy a site. And you can see it's saying, let's deploy Barcelona, Spain. And then it has a list of other sites we're going to bring up at the same time. And as we go back and look in the dashboard, we look at our overview, and we can see these sites starting to come up. And that's all being done through automation driven from that chatbot. And we can see there's still more sites from our list coming up. And when it's done, they're all there in our dashboard. And now we're ready to start configuring and doing some things with these networks. So let's say we want to set up the pre-shared key. 
So we can go to access control, we can see right now, these networks don't have one specified. It's not set up at all. We can go back to our bot and we can actually ask to set up and update that pre-shared key. So we're gonna specify the password, Cisco Meraki. And now what it's doing is, it's not just doing that for one network, it's doing them for all of them that are being managed by this organization. And we can verify that it is set up. So all of those operations we could have done completely from this chat interface without having to pop over into the dashboard. And what's great about that is if you have multiple teams there watching these sites come up, maybe it's IT, and then the people who will be in the stores getting them set up, they can all be there communicating in this space together. So you basically just use the bot, and in doing that, you just deploy the network. Yes. You set up the SSIDs across, and at the end, you unrolled it. Yep, you're totally you're done. Excellent. And so this is, if we want to go a little deeper into Learn It, this is what's going on behind the scenes. We've got WebEx teams, and the users are in there sending commands to the bot and talking with each other. And the bot is an application that we wrote. It's running in AWS. It uses uh, Lambda functions. It uses the Amazon API gateway. And what it's doing is it's sitting there. It's listening for those requests. And then it's calling the Meraki dashboard APIs. And that's where it's asking it to create a network, configure a device, do all of those things. And so once again, these are all APIs that are just out there available. And then as you set these up, it's a service available to everybody. Yep. And you can find out how to write these kind of applications on DevNet. We've got many examples in code exchange about how to create bots. We've got learning labs and sandboxes that help you use all the Meraki APIs. So you can go to DevNet right now and build an application like this today. Great, awesome. Thank you. And Mandy, do you have another example for us? I do have another example. <laughs> so I also wanted to look at Cisco SD-WAN. And in this case, we're going to look at kind of when we're getting ready to really open that new store. And we want to make sure that all of our policies and configuration and everything is set up correctly for that, for that new branch. All right, so the pieces of this stack we're going to be using, Cisco SD-WAN at the infrastructure level. We're going to be using the device and configuration and policy APIs from vManage, and then it's really the IT operator who would be using this particular application that we're going to write. So we've got this distributed uh, view of, of our stores and our IT. We've got our headquarters, private cloud, public cloud, and then all of the stores underneath. And we want to add a new store. In this situation, we have vEdge routers at each one of those stores. And we want to make sure that they are providing the exactly identical services at the stores. And we want to avoid configuration drift by going in and configuring each one of them separately. And so what we can do is use a feature called a template that exists in vManage. And that lets us set that up. And then we can attach that template to the new device. Now it's online. It has the same policies. It behaves like all the other stores. And what's great is that all of these things about managing the devices, managing the templates, attaching the template, we could do using APIs. And I want to show you a quick example of actually running some code for that. <clears throat> all right, so I think we will switch over. Now we're good. All right, so you could start on our Cisco SD-WAN API developer site. And it's got loads of information about how to use the APIs. But you may just want to also dive right in and start writing some code. And you may think, is there some code out there that already does this thing she talked about with attaching templates and doing all that? And that's where Code Exchange comes in. Code Exchange is where our community can share their code. So I could go in here, search for SD-WAN, and I can find this, app, this example. And it's a full project. And if I read it, it does this functionality of attaching the templates. So I can actually just clone it, get it on my computer from GitHub, and I'm ready to go. Like someone's already done quite a bit of work to get this ready for me to start learning from and trying out. So we're going to just dive right in and, and, and run this and see what it looks like. All right, so the first thing that I need to do is get a list of devices. And the function that does that is called, to get back to it, device list. So we're going to run this device list function. This is going to go call the Cisco SD-WAN DevNet Sandbox. 
is bringing us back a list of all the devices that exist in that sandbox. And then the other thing I want to know is, what about the templates? What templates currently exist? And we're going to get our template list. And so this is going to go, same thing, call the sandbox, get the list of templates, and bring it back. Where's my templates? <laughs> Here we go. So we can see there's two templates, the basic template and a test template. And we can see that this basic template has two devices attached to it currently. And I'd like to know which devices those are. So I'm going to run a function called attach devices. And I give it the template that I'm interested in. So now it's going to go back, call the sandbox. It's calling the APIs that are specified for getting that list of attached devices. And there is store one and store two, currently attached and using that template. And what I'd like to do is attach our third, our third router to use that same template. So I'm going to call a function called attach. And this goes off. This is doing a number of things, calling those APIs. And then I can verify by calling that same list again to see if the third one has been added yet. Here it comes. And we can see there's the third store. The template is applied. Policy is set. And that store is up and ready to go. So. Excellent. So it was a little bit tense trying to see if that third store was going to come up. Yes. And it came up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. So Mandy, you can also show us resources and there's places we can get yes. all this. Yes, there's one thing I did want to show you that back on the site, um, we do have a full set of learning labs that can show you from beginning to end that whole example that you can build yourself. And this is a sandbox where you can start to play with, explore, build on top of all of the Cisco SD-WAN APIs. And we also have some really great videos that can walk you through if you like video tutorials as well. Excellent. Great. Thank you, Mandy. And Mandy's going to show us some more in a little bit. I'll take the clicker. Yes. Oh, sorry. Thank <laughs> you. OK, so, uh, so we've been talking a lot about uh, giving an example in the retail industry. We actually showed doing some automation in, uh, for, through infrastructure services. But as you can know, these apply across all industries. Now what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the IoT side of the house. Uh, so as we know, here at Cisco Live, we've had some great announcements around IoT. And so now what we're going to do is jump into the software side, because what IoT enables is edge computing, and we have a lot for you here on DevNet. So as Liz and Tony was saying as she presented in the keynote and as she presented in, in her innovation talk, we talked about Cisco's IoT strategy. And in our IoT strategy, we are driving intent-based networking to the IoT edge. Now, the part that I get excited about is that, in addition, we're also driving developer innovation to the IoT edge. And what happens is our new industrial edge routers have iOS XE, which enables intent-based networking. In addition, it has IOX, which allows it to host applications and containers on the device, and this enables edge computing. So we have both sides of this. Now, many developers are excited about edge computing, and the idea of it is not new. The excitement of edge computing has been around for many years, but it hasn't quite realized itself in some industrial and enterprise and kind of real world environments. And why not? It's because we've had this chicken and egg problem. So yeah, we can write an edge computing application, but where's the edge computing infrastructure where I can deploy it? And well, why should we make infrastructure? Because we don't have the applications yet. But with Cisco's new routers, and what we've included for these edge routers, is that now we have now enabled an edge computing infrastructure that allows these edge computing applications to be built. And we've just broken or kick-started this cycle. And so if we take a look at developers, well, as developers, they've been empowered, greatly empowered, to write mobile apps. They've been greatly empowered to write cloud applications. And again, with what's happening now with our new IoT portfolio, developers are now empowered to also write edge computing applications for a number of real world environments. Now let's take a look at why do we need edge computing? Well, let's take a look in these different settings. So in manufacturing, in manufacturing we have a number of you know, just really high speed operations. You have like real manufacturing, real equipment, real physical operations that are going on. 
you have low latency and high performance requirements. You can be getting data of all sorts of things happening. You don't want to send that data off into the cloud, analyze it, get a decision, and come back and decide what your machine should do next. So that's a great environment in which edge computing is really important. Another example is retail. We just talked a lot about the store scenario. And here is where you have these very geographically physical, distributed physical locations. Each store is a unit in itself, and it has to work really well. Edge processing and edge computing is really important for retail stores to be able to operate. In utilities, so in the keynote, we heard from the utilities industry. We saw examples of where there are substations and things that need a lot of automation and control. And there, you're interfacing with physical systems. You're interfacing with brownfield deployments. And in these areas, it's another place where you need a lot of edge computing to be able to handle what's going on in those environments. And finally, transportation in cities. So this is a case where you have just roads, railways, waterways. And in all of this, you have a physically distributed infrastructure. In addition, you have cars, you have boats, you have trains, you have mobile and phys moving things. So let's take a look at that example some more. And what we're going to do is now show you the full stack, but with IoT. So here, what we have is our new products, our new industrial routers that are available. And then for infrastructure and application services, we have Kinetic. And in this case, it does both device and application management. And now we have edge computing, and we can appeal to IT and OT operators and the Internet of Things. So if we take a look at the example, is let's take a look at police cars. So in this case, and uh, there was an example that Liz had talked about, which was Swisscom in the city of St. Gallen, in which there were police cars that are going around, and what Swisscom did was help them get connected. And the police officers wanted an experience where, of course, the police officers are working in their cars. And if you take a look at those cars, there's wireless, there's laptops, there's tablets, there's dashboard cameras, there's all sorts of things that are happening in that mobile unit itself. And of course, there's many police cars moving around. And on them are the industrial routers. So in those cars, we have a router that's in the car. And if you think that they have to be managed, those are each gateways that need to be managed with a gateway manager. In our new products, what we have is we have IOX that's on those edge routers that allows applications and containerized applications to be hosted at the edge. And in addition, we have Kinetic, which is a gateway manager that we can look at as well. And if we look at the capabilities, what happens is in the gateway management, we have Kinetic and Field Network Director. You can actually do device management to manage all those gateways. But in addition, you can do application management to basically deploy and take care of those applications. And of course, on the devices themselves, you have IOX, which can, again, manage the applications and containers. And if you dig in a little bit, underneath these, there's APIs. So there's device management APIs that actually allow different groups of these gateways to be put into groups. You can have users or owners that are organized into memberships in which you can say this group can claim this set of gateways, all the police cars, and take care of them. This other group can claim and take ownership of the ambulances. So this is how this works. And then on the application management side, there's a way to manage edge applications, to install and deploy those uh, edge applications, to make sure that they're running, starting and stopping them, and so on. So now we're going to go back to our DevNet, see it, learn it, code it, to see some of this working in a fleet management operation. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Mandy. Thank you. So we wanted to dive in a little further on the police car example that you yes. talked about. But think about managing the whole fleet of police cars and some of the information that you would want to keep track of. So that's the, the use case that we're going to dive into. And it starts with your enterprise network, right? Um, and you have your team who's trained to use DNA Center to manage your enterprise networking. And what's great is that we have all of these new industrial ruggedized routers we're talking about this week. And those, what, they can be managed by DNA Center. And many of them run, run iOS XE as well. And so I have one of those here, which I'm really excited to show. This is the, I, the IR1101. So this is one of the, the new routers. And it's really cool. It's got some onboard sensors, like gyroscope and accelerometer and GPS. Um, but can you guys see it in the back? Because it's really compact, right? Like, you could have it. You cannot see it? Can't see it. Okay, well, I thought that might be a problem. So I brought, 
a bigger one as well so that you could really see it, right? <laughs> so I'm very excited to share this. And um, um, now, that's, is that a real one? Do we have an application for that? Um, I haven't tried deploying to the edge on this one. Okay. <laughs> oh, so it's a 3D printed model. It's a 3D model printed of model. The one. But I <laughs> wanted to be sure you guys could see it. So um, let me grab my clicker again. <laughs> so there's, like I said, there are some really cool things about it. It has the onboard sensors, and um, it's also modular. So there are modular extensions that you can swap out and get new capabilities and new things. So we're really excited about that as well. But now let's talk about it in the police car. And we'd probably need this one in the police car, not, not this okay, one, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so once it's there, then we can start connecting things like cameras and sensors, which means we're going to have data. And if we're going to have data, we need an application. And so that's where we want to start writing an application to work with that data. And this is where we can use Kinetic. Kinetic will let me write my application on my dev box using my favorite developer tools, and then very simply deploy that containerized application to the edge in the, in the router. Excellent. And so now that I've got that custom application there, I can start taking in data, and parsing it, and normalizing it, decide if I'm going to send it to the cloud or to the private cloud. In this case, we're going to send it to a fleet management dashboard that's going to show us things like speed and if our check engine light is on and some things like that. So let's take a quick look at that. <clears throat> so I'm going to start in Kinetic. And you can see that I've, I have a gateway set up. And um, I want to deploy an application to this gateway. So I have some applications already loaded in, but if I want to add a new one, I can say add application, and it's really as simple as taking my, my packaged application and dragging it in to load it into Kinetic. But then once that application is there, I need to install it onto my Edge device. So I can choose install, and then I can select my device that I want to deploy it to. Now, that could be one device. That could be the devices in your whole fleet. And then I click Install, and it goes out and installs that application. So in this particular fleet management case, then we would start getting back some of that information from the OBD2 interface, like check engine, mileage, speed, and we can start to manage, manage our fleet. Awesome. So that was see it and learn it. But how do I do it? You can go to DevNet. And that's where you can find the API documentation for the Kinetic APIs and the new IoT Dev Center, which has use cases, learning labs, sandboxes, everything you need to build that application, package it up, and get it onto the device. Excellent. Awesome. All Thank right. you so much, Mandy. Thank you. <laughs> Great job, Mandy. <laughs> oh, I got to turn it. Excellent. OK, good job. Did you guys like the big version, just so you could see it? Excellent. So uh, OK, so we've shown you a lot of great technologies. We showed you Meraki. We showed you SD-WAN. We showed you Kinetic and IOX. So now let's take a look at how we can continue to help you innovate. Um, so some of the new things that we have, I'm going to tell you, we're actually launching new developer centers. So you've seen the IoT developer center. But we also have new developer centers for SD-WAN, ACI, as well as one on retail that you can go and get at developer.cisco.com. We have new APIs, and we have new resources on Meraki. We have a new video course on security, which you can get a lot more on security. And we have design thinking, all available at developer.cisco.com to help you and your teams work together. In addition, I want to talk about DevNet Exchange. So, they often ask, how many lines of code does a good developer write per day? You might say, oh, 200, 300 lines of code a day. And someone else said, zero, because they know where to get the code. What we have is DevNet Code Exchange, where you can actually get repos from GitHub, source code that you can use to build these solutions today. So you can actually start and find solutions in, in, uh, in DevNet. And we have 338 repos there available. And then we have over. 1,500 business solutions that are available on ecosystem exchange. 
With ecosystem exchange, what you can do is look at solutions that are available for purchase or that you can put into your products today. And here we show some of the new IoT solutions that we've onboarded, including SimCom for street lighting, Aliancha for manufacturing, Eximprod for utilities. And again, these are products that can help you build complete solutions with your programmable infrastructure today. I'm happy to announce that we have new DevNet learning paths. And we have DevNet learning paths where we actually have a series of learning labs in many of these different areas that you can actually get to to say, I want to skill up in these areas in data center networking, Meraki, IoT, and get going today. And the way that you can get to this is also through your new DevNet profile and dashboard. So if you just log into DevNet at developer.cisco.com, in the upper right hand corner, you actually see your mobile. And you can do it from your mobile device as well. But you see your little icon, you click on it, you'll actually get your dashboard, which can then point you to these learning paths that we're releasing, and go right to those learning labs and take them right from your mobile device. So it's a great way to get going. And something new in beta that we're announcing is that we have our new DevNet team dashboard. A number of partners have asked us that they wanted to train their employees and use our DevNet learning materials. And we love this. We love anyone to use our materials to train your other people. And so for this, we actually have created a team dashboard so that the owners of these organizations can take a look and give training to their teams, track the progress of, and then also use this to find people who have expertise in certain areas. So some of the leaders have said, I don't know if someone has expertise in this security area. Customers asking for it can actually find which of your employees have actually taken learning labs in this area. So this is going to be, uh, this is a new uh, thing that we're offering for our partners. And what I'm very excited to talk about is another thing is as you're learning to use these resources, a big important part of it is getting into the mindset of experimenting, coding, trying new things. And so we also offer DevNet developer competitions. And I'd like to bring Ashutosh to come back up as he leads our co-creations in our developer competitions to quickly talk about a new result and a new challenge that we just completed. And it was the Cisco and Google Cloud Challenge. Yes. So, so recently what we did is in July of uh, last year, we announced our challenge with, along with Google. And this was a way to show innovation that we can foster with our partners as well as developers. So this challenge ran for six months. And at the end of six months, we had a lot of registrations that came in. And then we had like two finalists and two winners that we are happy to announce today. And so today, we have our new winners right here with us. Yeah, the first one is HCL Technologies. And they are here with us today. And along with them, we have the Booker and Sutter, along with the Expert Flow folks. So and I'm going to ask them all four to stand up and turn around, face the audience, and face the cameras so that our people remotely can also see. And congratulations for, for the innovations. Thank you. Thank you. And Ashutosh is going to briefly speak to yeah, their so, innovation. Yeah, so what the, the solution that HCL actually provided was in the service provider uh, space. And there was this case was actually taking like aggregation data in, in on-premise as well as in the cloud. So this was a very good use case where they used the CCP as well as the GCP services to build a solution. The second one is from the expert flow. And this one is the hybrid chat application. Uh, this is a very interesting one because this is where like, they could actually take, uh, like if you're talking to a real person, you would be talking to a, G a GCP, uh, you'd be talking to somebody in the Cisco container platform. Versus like if you're talking to an AI-generated bot, then you'd be talking to somebody in GCP. So this is a classic uh, hybrid cloud application that they've built. And in fact, like I was told that it is going live uh, this week. Uh, so I'm very happy that this application is seeing the light of day. So congratulations to Great. both of you. Congratulations. Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank you. OK, so to wrap things up, I just want to remind you some of the things that we talked about. So as we talked about, IT is in a critical place. And IT can help solve business problems, especially as businesses are facing disruption from the whole new round of digital competitors. So by doing this, we recommended to, first of all, you need to get into creating new experiences, solving customer and business problems. You can get to this 
by maximizing intelligence with every interaction that you have. Collect that data, maximize the intelligence, and create an infrastructure where you can deploy innovation, innovative applications. So you can use innovations like the ones we just saw, and more that will come in the future by having that programmable infrastructure and being able to deploy new innovations. And you do this by making your infrastructure programmable. And we have many Cisco technologies that help you make a programmable infrastructure. Uh, we have the DevNet approach of see it, learn it, code it, and we have all of our resources available at developer.cisco.com. And we also have an app developer, where apps meet infrastructure conference called DevNet Create, which is happening in April, and you can find out about that at devnetcreate.io. So for those who want to start, and everybody has started, and I want everybody to start, we actually have something new here at Cisco Live, which is we have in the DevNet zone, we have a start now zone. It's a place where we're running Coding 101 and 102 classes all day long, where we have mentors, where we can ask questions and learn about DevNet. And even if you don't know, can DevNet help me? You can go there and talk to people to find out. And it is certainly to get you started in coding, but it is also for solutions architects and business developers who want to create solutions and look at the solutions that we have. And if you're online, you can do all of this at developer.cisco.com slash start now. And also take a look at your profile where we have all of the tools that are available for your individualized learning as well. Thank you, everybody. Continue. Thanks. <laughs>